I suppose I wanted to take us back to international and global perspectives, because this is what we're supposed to be talking about. Um, <laughs> Uh, but to pick up earlier issues on Quakers and also Catholics, uh, I think one of the ways that the Quakers on both sides of the Atlantic fit very much into this conference is, of course, the growing abolitionist movement, uh, the absolute collaboration, uh, not just between Britain and the United States, but that's a very, very strong element, but also the growing peace movement. Uh, the peace movement, which gets really going in Britain after the 1812 war, uh, and again, that's a transatlantic movement. And I suppose you might want to connect the growing peace movement, perhaps with the residual shock of these two Protestant peoples, uh, which had been one, fighting so bloodily. Uh, and I suspect, again, this is one of the ways we could open up the long-term repercussions of this tremendous event. Christine got her two extra minutes that we were informally allowed, and I, I was obedient, so I want to quickly grab something more <laughs> about the point of the state. It comes out of what we've just been saying about religion, that the evangelical tsunami of the 1790s and onwards is in part about control and definition of public power not in the formal sense that this will be a formally Protestant country, but in the sense who's going to be in charge and with what purposes. And I think that extends to the larger point that I was trying to make, that when I stopped, obediently, I was on the point of saying that what emerges in terms of the Westphalian slash Philadelphian system, again to borrow Sadowski, is a system that is worth controlling and a system that can do things. And there are many contestants about this system Natives are excluded by definition, Indians not taxed. Free black people are excluded by custom and have to figure out another way to deal with the fact that they are free in a land that doesn't actually want them and to keep on struggling with the hope that they might eventually redeem this damn place. Evangelical Protestants want to redeem the country from the, um, the Federalist secular project of the 1780s and 1790s. But behind all of it, there is a power which can do things a power which can rapidly take control of the landscape from sea to shining sea, redefine that landscape, redefine some people in and some people out. What I was trying to get at is that this problem of these four intersecting themes is not just peculiar to the United States, that it is a situation that's going to have variants all the way down to Tierra del Fuego. There's the international dimension. And if I'd had been quicker of mind, I would have grabbed the point at the first place. But you were quicker than I was. 